Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. So today I wanted to do a video where I talk about all of the pans that I hit in 2023 as well as pans I would like to hit in 2024. I have done each of these videos separately the past couple years on my channel and have really enjoyed doing them so I thought I'd combine them for today's video. So I'm going to go through each of the palettes that I want to talk about and say if I have hit any pans in them and if there are any shades I would like to hit pan on in this next year. So if that interests you, then keep on watching. So I think I want to go in order from oldest to newest palettes. And this is not all of the palettes within my collection. I am planning on doing an updated eyeshadow palette collection video, I believe next week. So be sure to subscribe and stay tuned for that if you are interested. But this is going to cover a portion of my palettes. And yeah, I just wanted to talk about some of the pans within my collection. I believe I hit 27 pans this year and that makes a grand total of 77 pans out of 1,073 shadows total in my collection. So I'm sitting at 7.18%. I would really love to get that up to 10% this next year. So we will see what we can do. So this palette is the Wet n Wild All Natural palette. It is the oldest one within my collection. So this past year, 2023, I did hit pan in this last black shade here. That one, I believe, was part of my pan those eyeshadows pretty early on in the year. And next year, I would really love to get pan in this kind of charcoal-y gray shade. I don't reach for this palette a ton, but I feel like I've got a slight little dip in there and would love to see pan on this one next year. I am probably going to be decluttering this one semi-soon, but I still enjoy it and it has some really beautiful shades. This one especially is one of my favorites in my entire collection and is pretty much the only reason I'm keeping this, but I feel like getting another pan or two will really make me happy and maybe I will be able to declutter it after I see a little more use on it. Next up we have my Profusion Mixed Metals Peach Palette and I also hit one pan in this this past year which was in the shade Wannabe and next year I would love to hit pan in certain get just over that halfway mark. There's not actually a half in this with an odd number, but I would love to have another pan within this palette. Alright, next up is my Wet n Wild Rosé in the Air palette. Definitely one of the most used within my collection, but surprisingly I did not hit any of these pans this past year. I don't really know why I didn't focus on this one as much. I am really wanting to try and fully pan this palette. So of course these two are on my list for 2024. I would love to see this palette completely panned. It will be the first time I have ever done that. So definitely a big goal of mine. It was a goal of mine this year, but I just didn't get there. So hopefully 2024 will be the year for me to fully pan this palette. Alright, then sticking with Wet n Wild, we have my Not A Basic Peach palette, and I hit pan on this blue shimmer shade this past year, and ideally for next year, I would love to hit pan on this orange matte shade. It will definitely take some dedication, probably more than I put into it this year. I believe that blue shade was part of my pan, those eyeshadows, and which is why I got the pan in that palette, or in that shade. So it's definitely going to take a little bit more use. These older palettes in my collection definitely don't get as much love as some of the newer ones, which is definitely sad, but I am in no way ready to declutter them yet. So I am going to keep trying to get some use on this palette as well. Next up, we have my ColourPop It's a Princess Thing palette. So I currently have three pans within this palette, but... Unfortunately, none of them were hit this year. 
I was slowly trying to work towards some for this year, but it just didn't end up happening. So there are three on my list for next year. That is Chip, Juju, and Magic Carpet. This is my favorite palette within my collection, so I find it really easy to use and to reach for. So I am very hopeful I can get at least one of those panned. Hopefully two or three of them would really be the goal. Alright, next up we have my BH Cosmetics Nouveau Neutrals palette. And again, I did not hit any pans in this one this year, but I am so close to this light pink shimmer shade. I was really hoping to get this one by the end of the year, but it doesn't look like it's coming, so this one is definitely on my list, and I definitely think I can get pan in this one in 2024, probably pretty early on, I would guess, as long as I'm focusing on it a little bit more. All right, moving on to my ABH Modern Renaissance palette. I did hit pan in Antique Bronze this year, which I was super excited about, and I would love to get a couple more pans in this palette next year. I have written down that I would like Golden Ochre and Love Letter, but we will see. This one, I'm not super picky about what ones get panned. I just feel like I'm probably closest with those ones. So that's on my list. I would love to see just some more usage within this palette. I love this color story. It's been a favorite of mine for years. I feel like I have gone down in my uses on it, so I would like to pick that back up next year and hopefully get a couple more pans. Alright, next up we have my Glitter Realm A Whole New World palette. So I did hit two pans in this palette this year. So those two were Diamond in the Rough and Prince Ali. I feel like I got some pretty good size pans in both of those shades. They are super easy for me to use, and this was just natural use on them, so super excited about that. And next year, I have on my list that I would like Abu to be panned. That one I find really easy to use. It's just a nice brown transition shade. Just throw it through the crease, super simple, and there is a little bit of a dip starting to form in this, so I am hopeful. Alright, next up we have my Wet n Wild and Pac-Man Game Over palette. So this past year I did hit pan in this shade over here that was a part of my Pan Those Eyeshadows and I was so excited to get my first pan within this palette, especially since it is a little bit older within my collection. And next year I would ideally like to hit pan on this darker blue shade. I feel like when I reach into this palette, it is for these colorful shades, and I enjoy creating the fun, colorful looks. So I think this one will take a little bit of dedication, but I would love to see another pan within this palette. Alright, next we have my Milani Soft and Sultry. And at the very beginning of the year, I did hit pan on Diamonds and Pearls. This was just a super easy inner corner highlight shade for me to use so was not super surprised that I was able to get a pan in this one. Ideally I would like to get pan in soft touch. I feel like this has been on my list for a couple of years but it is a super easy shade for me to use. It just is pretty hard pressed and these pans are a little deeper so it is going to take a little bit more work but I am hoping that if I can get some good dedicated use, I might be able to get a pan in that shade. Next up, we have my Maybelline Lemonade Craze palette, and there are quite a few pans within this one as well. I only hit one of them this year, though, and that was Strawberry Lemonade. Such a gorgeous pink shimmer shade. Super nice to just throw all over the lid or in the inner corner. So I was so happy to use this shade to get a pan on it. And next year, I have quite a few shades from this one in on my list. These shades are pretty easy to hit pan on, in my opinion. So I would love to hit pan on most of these bottom shades. So Old Fashioned, Coral Punch, 
sugar-coated, and sweet tea are all on my list. I This is another palette. I would love to see all of the shades panned relatively soon. Again, I find this palette super easy to hit pan on, so just a little bit of dedication, and I think I can get at least a couple in this palette this next year. Alright, next up we have my ColourPop Midnight Masquerade palette. And I only have two pans within this palette. Neither of them were hit this past year, but I have two more on my list for next year. And those are Mama Odie, which is probably my favorite shade within this palette. It has a really nice dip going in it, so I think just a few more uses and I can get this one. And then ideally, I would also like to hit pan in Floating Lantern. The glitter shades aren't ones that I use a ton, but they are super easy to hit pan on. I have pan on Royal Ball, and I think it only took me like two or three uses within that shade just because the glitter moves around super easily and you can just kind of dig into them. I have used this shade on my nails before. Glitters are kind of the only shades that I will use on my nails just because it doesn't really feel as much like cheating to me. If you use other shades on your nails, that is amazing for you, but personally, I don't really like to. I like to get my use on them on my eyes just because I feel like nails take up so much product, but with glitters, they're not something I'm going to really be putting on my eyes too much, so I do enjoy using those ones on my nails, so maybe that is how I can get a nice pan in that glitter shade. Alright, next up we have my Nomad palette by Juvia's Place, and this one currently does not have any pans in it, but I would love to get one in this center shade right here. I find this one super easy to use. It is a gorgeous lid shade, so I am hopeful that I could get pan in this and get my very first pan within this palette. Alright, I have the e.l.f. Retro Paradise palette up next and I hit two pans within this one this past year and those were in Paradiso and Tropicana. Tropicana was part of my Pan Those Eyeshadows project and I'm so happy I was able to get a pan in that shade so four pans total in this palette currently and I have a few on my list for next year. So those are Royal, Disco, and Nightlife all right in a row there. I think those ones have the biggest dips within this palette. So definitely ones I feel like I can focus in on and hopefully get a couple pans. I would love to see some more use on this palette. It's one of my favorites in my collection. So definitely an easy one for me to reach for. So would really love to see some of those goals met. Alright, next we are going to be moving on to my Ulta Harry Potter collection. So this is the Gryffindor palette. So no pans in this one yet, but I would like to get one in Passion. I have pan in a different one of the house palettes, and they are definitely deeper than I had expected them to be. So I will have to see how much usage this one will take me. This is a super easy shade for me to use all over the lid in the inner corner, so I can use fairly large amounts of it when reaching into this palette. So we will just kind of have to wait and see if I can get enough usage to hit pan, hit my very first pan within this palette. Next up we have my Ulta Hufflepuff palette, and same as the last one, this one does not have any pans, but I would like to hit pan in Lumos. This is a really pretty inner corner highlight shade, and I find those to typically be the easiest shades to hit pan on just because I am using a really small brush with this and focusing in on kind of one small area. I know some people don't like to do this, and I've gotten questions before, like why do you just target one area? And if I'm being honest, it just kind of naturally happens, especially when I'm using the smaller brushes. And I do like the fact that I can get to pan and show progress on these shades. And then I still have the rest of the shadow within the pan to work on afterwards as well. 
So this one I would hope would be fairly easy, but we will have to see. And then we have the Ravenclaw palette. And this one actually does have a pan, but I did not hit this one this last year. But there are two in here that I would like to focus on in 2024. And those are Hedwig, another gorgeous inner corner shade, and Twilight. I feel like I have a pretty good dip in Twilight. And like I said earlier, these shades are a little deeper than I had expected them to be. But I still feel like with some good use, I could get pan in at least one of these shades, but hopefully both of them. And our last Hogwarts house, the Slytherin palette. This one is definitely my least used, but I did still want to set the goal for myself of hitting pan in the shade Moon. That is definitely one of the easier shades for me to work on in this palette. Again, this is more of an inner corner highlight shade for me, and I know I just need to get some more use out of this palette, so I thought it would be good to have a shade in here that I would like to focus on hitting pan on. Next, we have my Essence Salute Paris palette, and I did hit pan in this one this past year in this shade right here. It was a really nice all over lid shade when I was doing some softer pink looks and you can probably tell which two I would like to hit pan on next year just based on the dips. It'd be this matte shade right here. I feel like I'm so close and then this even lighter pale pink shimmer shade. I feel like I'm getting really close on both of those so very very hopeful that I can get pan in both of those this next year. Alright, next up we have my I Heart Revolution Beauty and the Beast palette. So, no new pans this year, but I would ideally like to get pan in Cogsworth and Mrs. Potts. Mrs. Potts is probably my go-to cream shade at the moment, just because I do really want to hit pan on that one. So, hopefully I can continue to get some good use on it and... I am slowly starting to wear it down. This one I am using a fluffier brush with, so the pan is kind of wearing evenly across the shade. So I know it's going to take quite a few more uses, but I am very hopeful that I can get pan in that one. And as for Cogsworth, I feel like the shimmers in here go fairly quickly, and this one has a very slight dip forming in it, so... I am hopeful that with some more use, I can get pan in that one as well. Next up, we have my I Heart Revolution Cinderella palette. So this is what this one looks like. And I did hit pan in Glass Slipper this past year. This is actually my most recent pan within my collection. I was super happy that I was able to get this one before the end of the year. And I'm pretty happy with where this one is at. And I don't really have any goals to hit pan on any of the individual shades. But I am hoping to just show a little more progress. So maybe the year after I can get a few more pans within this palette. Alright, next up we have my Wet n Wild Stop Playing Safe palette. And no new pans from 2023. But I would like to focus in on this matte kind of creamsicle orange shade and this pale yellow shimmer. Those are two of my most used shades within this palette. And I do find these palettes fairly easy to hit pan on. So a little more use, a little more love, and I think I could get some pretty good progress on these shades. Next up we have my ABH Soft Glam palette. And I feel like this is the one that I panned the most this past year. So, so I hit pan on four of the six shades this past year. So Glistening, Rose Pink, Mulberry, and Fairy were all hit this past year. And I am so happy about that. I don't know if I've ever hit four pans in a palette in a year, so... This was definitely a very successful year for this palette, 
and I have one more that I want to add in next year and that would be Cypress Umber. ABH shades are notoriously pretty easy to hit pan on and I have definitely found that to be the case with this palette specifically. So I am hoping that I can get at least another pan next year. I did kind of slow down on my usage towards the end of the year with this one just because I felt like I had been focusing in focusing on it so much, especially during the middle of the year. But I am so incredibly happy that this one now has six total pans in it. Next up, we have my ColourPop Garden Variety Palette, and no new pans this past year, but I do have Wavelength and Clay Day on my list. Wavelength is another super simple inner corner shade or light lid shade. Super easy for me to use. And then Clay Day, I am a little surprised that I am going for pan with this one, but I feel like the sequin matte formula from ColourPop is a lot easier to use or to show progress on, I should say. So those two are definitely on my mind, on my list to try and hit Panna next year. Next we have my Rude Cosmetics Roaring Twenties Carefree Palette and I hit Pan on Swell this past year. This one was towards the end of the year and I'm super happy about it. These pans are pretty shallow so I did decide that I should add in another one for 2024. So the one I want to focus on is Hooch down here. I feel like that one should be fairly easy for me to use and these shimmers show progress pretty quickly and like I said, fairly shallow pans. So I am quite hopeful that I'll be able to show some good progress within this palette. So next we have the Roaring Twenties Reckless palette from Rude Cosmetics. And there are no pans in here yet, but I do have two on my list. And those are Jazz Night and Swanky. They both have small dips starting to form in them. So I am crossing my fingers that I will be able to get some good progress on them. I don't know if the pans in here are the same depth as the Carefree palette, so I'm not sure if these will be as easy to hit pan on as the ones in those palette, but I'm hopeful that I will at least get some good progress and hopefully get my first and maybe second pan within this palette. Next palette I want to talk about is, again, part of the Roaring Twenties collection. This is the Neons palette, and I don't have any goals within this for next year necessarily, but I did hit pan in Electric this past year. This was another one that was part of my Pan Those Eyeshadows project, and I had just so much fun playing with that shade. It became one of my favorites the couple months that I had it in that project to use and to just create some fun looks with. So this is definitely another palette I'm going to want to reach into some more and hopefully get some good progress. But like I said, no plans for pan yet, but hopefully just some good dips starting to form. Next we have my Be Bella Daisy Days palette. I hit two pans within this one in 2023, and those were Dawn, which is the tiniest little baby pan, and then Golden Glow, which is one of my favorite shades within this palette. And I would ideally like to get a pan in Loyal Love in 2024. That is a super easy blending out setting shade for me to use. So very hopeful. These shades I do find fairly easy to hit pan on. So yeah, that is definitely going on the list. Next up we have my I Heart Revolution The Little Mermaid palette. So this is another one in my collection with no pans, but I do have two on my list and those are Aquata and Dinglehopper. Dinglehopper I feel like I should be pretty successful with. Again, those inner corner shades in a fairly targeted area and they're super easy to use on a daily basis. Aquata might take a little more effort just because blue is not an everyday color for me, but this is a really light, pretty blue, so 
I do feel fairly comfortable wearing it on a daily basis, so pretty hopeful that I will get some good use on this palette and hopefully a couple pans. Next up, we have this little cutie from Huda Beauty. This is their Nude Obsessions Light Palette. And I have two shades that I would like to hit pan on in 2024. And those are the second brighter purple shade. And then this kind of darker, mauve toned purple shade. They are... I find that the shimmers in here, based on the one that I hit should be pretty easy. These pans seem pretty shallow and I do have a few good uses on these shades already so I don't think it will take too much effort to hit pan on these so very hopeful. It's just going to be one that I need to kind of remind myself to reach for. Next up from Huda Beauty we have the Desert Dusk palette. And I hit pan on Twilight thanks to my Pan Those Eyeshadows project. Looking back, that project seemed pretty successful. I feel like I wasn't hitting that many projects as I was doing it month to month. But looking back, I did get quite a few pans from that project. So super happy about that one. I do have three shades on my list for 2024. And those are Eden, Nefertiti, and Angelic. And those are definitely three of my most used shades within this palette. So I am anticipating I can get some more good use on them. Looking at Twilight, the pans don't seem very deep. And that one I found fairly easy to hit pan on. It is a slightly different formula than the other shimmers within this palette. So we will see what differences that makes in number of uses. But I am definitely looking forward to getting some more use on this palette next year. Next we have my NYX Ultimate Utopia palette. So no new pans from 2023. But I do have a few shades on my list. First this second shade right here. I hope you can see there is a little dip starting to form. This palette doesn't really have a true inner corner shade for me so that is typically the one I use so that's why you can kind of see that smaller dip. Next I would really like to hit pan on that lighter kind of brownish shimmer shade. I've got a pretty good amount of usage in it already and if you look at the green shade underneath it the pans are fairly shallow so really hopeful that I can hit pan in that one. And then I added in number 11 here just for some fun. Again, I found this shade really easy to hit pan on, so I am pretty hopeful that the other shimmers in here will go as quickly as that one did. All right, next palette I have to talk about is my I Heart Revolution Aladdin palette. So I feel like very similar to the Little Mermaid palette from this collection, the two shades I want to focus on in here are Aladdin, a nice inner corner shade, and Jasmine, a light blue shimmer. Similar things to say about these shades as the other palette, but I do find them both fairly easy to use, and they have a slight bit of usage on them already, so I decided that I would like to add them to my list. Next up, we have this palette from Hot Topic. This is the Winnie the Pooh Happy Halloween palette. I don't believe this one is available anymore, but they are always coming out with different Winnie the Pooh themed palettes and they're all super cute and I absolutely love this one. So there are two shades on my list that I would like to hit pan on next year and those are Tigger and Piglet. Those are definitely two of my most used shades within this palette. Super easy to use. This isn't a palette I reach for a ton, so it's definitely going to need to be a little bit more dedicated use and me kind of remembering to reach for it in order to get pan on these but depending on how deep these pans are I don't think it should take me too terribly long to hit pan on those shades so definitely hopeful for these ones. Next up we have my Be Bella Cosmetics Lotus Love Palette and I did have a couple shades in here in my Pan Those Eyeshadows but I rolled them out before hitting pan and 
Surprisingly, I don't think either of the shades on my list are from Panda's Eyeshadows, but the two I would like to hit pan on in this palette are Purity and Lush Blush. Purity, I feel like, is relatively close, only a handful more uses, and I feel like I could get to pan. It's a really nice inner corner and lid shade for everyday looks, so super easy for me to use. And Lush Blush, I just put on this list because there is a bit of a dip forming in there, and I feel like it is a little bit more on the powdery side, so I am kind of curious to see how long it would take. I don't think it should take too long to hit pan on this shade, so I did want to just add it in and see if I could get to pan in this one. And then we have the O oh Poppy palette from Be Bella. So again, two shades in here. Those are Picnic Date and Poppy Petals. Picnic Date has a pretty good dip going in it at the moment, and it's a really easy to use, just kind of outer corner deepening shade is how I like to use it. And then Poppy Petals was actually in my Pan Those Eyeshadows, and I feel like this one should be relatively easy to hit pan on. It shows quite a bit of progress with each use, so I feel like it should go fairly quickly. Red isn't a color I'm reaching for a ton, but maybe with some good use on it, I could get pan on this one as well. And to round out the Flower Feels collection from Bibello, we have the Sweet Sunflower palette. So from this one, I would like to also hit two pans, and those are in Sweet Moment and Paradise. Definitely two of the easiest shades for me to use within this palette. A nice blending out setting shade and then an inner corner shade. So both really easy and I do have pan in Rustic already and this one does look very, very shallow. But I also did notice that the shadow isn't pressed to the very top of the pan. So there is some kind of inconsistencies in regards to that. So... I imagine ones that are fuller will go a little slower, but I'm still hopeful that I can get a couple pans in this palette next year. Alright, next up we have my IBY Wonderland palette. And again, no pans within this palette. We are starting to get kind of more in my newer palettes. Ones I haven't had as long and haven't had chances to focus on as much. So one shade in here that I would like to hit pan on is Daydream. Definitely one of my most used within this palette. And I feel like it seems to go pretty quickly when I'm reaching into it. So there is a bit of a dip already forming in there. And I'm not sure how deep these pans are. That will be interesting to find out. This could take me a ton more uses and it could also take me a handful more uses. I just really have no true way of knowing whether or not these pans are super deep. So hopefully I can get a pan in this one soon and we'll be able to see. And my other IBY palette is their Boho palette. And one shade I would like to hit pan on in here is Glamp Light. Again, similar comments to the last one. I have no idea how deep these pans are. They could be fairly deep. The packaging is kind of thick. I don't know if you can see how well that well, but it is a little bit on the thicker side, so I'm not sure how far down these pans go. But I do really love that Glamp Light shade. It is super cute, and it's a little bit on the sheer side, so I do have to build it up and use a little bit more product when reaching into this one, so hopefully that will make it go a little faster. Next up we have my Sigma Enchanted palette. So I'm not sure if this one's going to be completely doable. I definitely need to focus in on it more, but a shade I would like to get pan on soon would be Innocent. I have a feeling that will be my first pan in this palette just because there is a slight dip starting to form but again I don't know how deep these pans are and I really have no idea how long this is going to take 
but there is some usage starting to show and I would really like to get a pan in this palette soon. So I did decide to add this to my list of goals and see if I could get there. And then we have my Sigma Cinderella palette. And again, one shade from here and this one would be Courtyard. That is a shade that I don't really use a ton, I'll say. I don't really use this palette a ton in general, but I feel like that one has the biggest dip and just reaching into it once seems to show more progress, especially compared to the other shades. So I thought I'd add it in here. It's a really fun shade for me to use and if I could get a pan on it somewhat soon, that would be just really great. All right, moving on to the third ABH palette I have in my collection. This is the Subculture palette, and unlike the other two, this one does not yet have any pans. It is, of course, the newest one within my collection, since I'm going in order from oldest to newest palettes within this video. So I haven't had this one nearly as long as the other two, but I am a little disappointed that I have not yet gotten any pans. But I do have three shades on my list for this palette, and those are Cube, Dawn, and Electric. Those are definitely three of the shades that I use the most within this palette. They've got some pretty good dips forming in them already, and like I mentioned with the other ABH palettes, the formula in these is usually pretty easy to hit pan on. I have found that this one doesn't seem to show as much progress as especially the Soft Glam palette does right away, so it will be interesting to see how long this one does take me to hit pan on them, but I feel like I could at least get a couple just based on how much I have used the shades this past year and hopefully will continue to use them. Next palette up is my BH Cosmetics Miss Claus So Spoiled palette. So once again, no pans quite yet in this one, but I did put four shades on my list for this one, and they also happen to be right in a column. So those are Stone Cold, Eggnog, Unwrapped, and this last shade has a bad word in it, so I'm not going to say it, but... Those are definitely some of my most used shades. You can see a theme here. I'm definitely focusing more on the shades that I reach for the most within a palette. So those are really fun shades to use and the pans are super small. You can see like compared to my finger, they are quite tiny. So I am hoping that also kind of means shallow for this case, but we will have to see. Again, I haven't hit pan on any of these shades, so there's really no way of knowing completely yet. So just kind of have to wait and see, but I'm hopeful that I can get some pans in this one. I just completely forgot to even update any pans that I have hit this past year. So we're going to rewind a minute and go back to my Be Bella O Poppy palette. And I did hit shade, pan in the shade Exotic this past year. So just completely forgot to mention some of these shades, so I'm going to quick catch up and then we'll get back on to the schedule here. Okay, luckily we had only missed one pan, so moving back along here, we are up to my Nabla Secret palette. And there are two shades in here that I have on my list to hit pan on, and those are Play Hard and Hypersensual. The pans in here, if they are like the Poison Garden palette, should be fairly shallow, and I feel like those two already have slight dips forming in them, so I am hopeful and imagining that these shouldn't take too long for me to hit pan on, so I did decide to add a couple of these onto my list. And speaking of the Poison Garden palette, I did hit one pan in this one this past year, and that was in Adoration, a super easy to use inner corner highlight shade. So again, these pans seemed pretty shallow and with an inner corner shade, like I've mentioned quite a few times within this video, I find them pretty easy to hit pan on just because I am kind of naturally targeting a small area. So 
This one did go pretty quickly, but I am happy that I was able to get my first pan within this palette. All right, next up we have one of my favorite palettes. This is the I Heart Revolution Oh The Places You'll Go palette. It is just such a cute little color story, and I did hit two pans in this this past year, so both this light green shade and this pink shimmer were hit in 2023, and I would like to add a couple more in 2024, and those are this pink matte shade and this purple shimmer. The purple shimmer should go pretty quickly. These pans are pretty shallow and like I said, this is one of my favorite palettes so I have a feeling I'll be able to get quite a bit of use on it so I don't imagine being too hard to hit some more pans within this one. Next up we have my beautiful shells Karma Chameleon Quad. This is the peach version. And I do have an affiliate link with Beautiful Shells if you are interested in shopping any of their palettes. I don't believe this one is available anymore, but they have a ton of gorgeous palettes and color stories if you are interested in checking them out. And if you would like to use my link and my code, you will save 10%. No pressure, but I just wanted to put that out there. And for this palette, I would really like to see a pan in this third shade down here. I don't exactly know how well that's going to go just because for this shade I do like to use my finger and I have not hit pan with using my finger on a shade before. Usually I have to use a brush so it's going to be interesting but it is a pretty malleable shade so I feel like I could get pan pretty easily. I don't want to force it but I also feel like it should be fairly easy to do, so we'll see if I'm able to get this one. I don't know. Again, it's kind of going to be a little trial and error with this shade. Next up, we have my Nomad Province palette. Such a gorgeous color story. This is one of my favorite Nomad palettes easily, and I am really looking to get my first pan within this palette. So I would love to hit pan on this light pink shimmer over here. It has some flecks of purple and blue in it as well. It's a super pretty shade and I feel like I do have quite a good dip forming in it already. And pretty much whenever I reach into this palette, I'm going to be reaching for that shade as well. So hopefully going to be pretty easy. This is, I feel like, one of the most used palettes from this past year. So hopefully I can keep that up and get my first pan within this palette. All right, only a couple palettes left. So next up we have my Pacifica Purple Nudes palette. And this is the first palette that I bought this past year in 2023. And I would love to see a pan in it come 2024. And that shade would be Amethyst. This already does have quite a nice dip forming in it. This is a shade I use quite a bit when I reach into this palette and I do find that I need to build it up a little bit which does cause me to use more product than a typical shade but I was kind of holding off on this one a little bit just because it feels a little strange to hit pan on a shade that I haven't really had in my collection for that long but I think in 2024 I will feel comfortable hitting pan on this shade and that is now my goal. Alright, last palette I want to talk about here is my Nomad Ghost Town USA palette. And this is, again, one of the newer ones within my collection. But I did find that the shimmers in here seem to be pretty malleable and easy to kind of show progress on. And specifically, Quicksilver seems to be forming the most of a dip right now. So... I've only used that one a few times and it already has a slight dip forming so I feel like with a little bit more dedicated use I might be able to hit pan on this one next year so definitely hopeful that I could get a pan in this one. Again, one of my newer palettes so this one isn't as important to me as some of the older ones within my collection but still definitely a goal of mine. So those are all of the pans that I hit this year and pans I would like to hit next year. Let me know what you guys thought of this video. 
what are some of your panning goals for 2024. I would love to hear what you guys are doing for your projects or if you're not doing any at all, that is totally fine too. Give this video a thumbs up if you did enjoy. Be sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on any future uploads. And with all of that said, I will see you in my next video. Bye!